everyone, welcome back to another episode of Mula Boss, empowering your e-commerce success. So in this episode, I will be talking about the difference between dropshipping, um, marketplaces, as well as self-warehousing. And these are the three typical e-commerce business models when just starting out, okay? So I'm gonna go through one by one on the pros and cons for each of these business models. So let's start with drop shipping. So if you don't know already, drop shipping is actually a business model where the e-commerce store owner, the retailer, does not own any inventory. All the inventory is actually outsourced to a third party who does the fulfillment and the warehousing and the shipping for you. So what this means is, as a drop shipper, you will have absolutely no inventory risk. So you might be thinking, oh, why wouldn't my customer go directly to the supplier then? So in drop shipping, typically the shipping method is actually white labeled. So customers actually don't know that the drop shipper, the supplier actually exists in the market. It's actually, they will think that it's you that's fulfilling the products. So it's a very, very innovative business model that's been around for uh, the past 10 years actually. It's quite old, but right now technology has enabled so much more um, possibilities with drop shipping. And to be honest, I actually started my e-commerce journey with drop shipping. And I used to drop ship Korean female clothing. I used to drop ship um, gadgets as well as healing crystals, chakra healing crystals. And last time, I always had this issue where my system is not very integrated with my drop shipper, okay? And there were a lot of overselling and underselling issues because the inventory level was just not synced. So a lot of people could have bought a product on my store, but my supplier did not have it. So that was one of the biggest issues with drop shipping. But thankfully, nowadays there are tons of apps that helps you automatically sync inventory from your drop shipper as well as your e-commerce store so that you don't need to face these overselling and overbuying issues anymore. So let's get started with the benefits and the weaknesses, the strengths and weaknesses of drop shipping. So the strength is obviously you don't need to hold inventory. So which means your capital to start up is extremely low. You can typically start a drop shipping website for less than 200 US dollars, 300 US dollars, like thereabouts. I personally started one with less than 100 US dollars, so it depends on your expectations a little bit. Um, another strength is that you wouldn't need to learn so much about uh, shipping methods, and and also, of course, it frees up a lot of your time that you'll be able to, you know, focus on growing your business. Um, because you don't have to do the operational heavy work, the dirty work, you know? So let's start with the weaknesses. Because drop shipping model is handled by a third party, the fulfillment is handled by a third party, you don't actually get control over shipping as well as packaging. Uh, yeah, so the fulfillment process, you lose a lot of control there. So you wouldn't be able to customize your invoice, for example, you wouldn't be able to put in a thank you card inside your shipping uh, box, for example. So that's pretty much the only weakness about drop shipping. And another thing that I can think of would be something like if you wanted to sell more products, you would need to source multiple uh, drop shippers, right? And if a customer buys a single product fulfilled by each and every one of these drop shippers, the customer will be receiving three different shipments, for example, and you would have to pay three times the shipping while your customer only has to pay one. So you need to make sure that when you start a drop shipping business, you will need to um, take all of these into account when it comes to uh, pricing your products and pricing your shipping, just so that you don't lose any money, okay? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is marketplaces. And marketplaces like Alibaba, Amazon, and depending where you're at, you know, Lazada, eBay, um, 
Flipkart, and these are all giant, giant marketplaces. And a lot of you might be tempted to start your e-commerce business on a marketplace. And personally, I'm not a very, very big fan of starting a marketplace e-commerce business because I've had a very, very poor experience. And if you, I'm pretty sure a lot of you know about Toys R Us in the US. So they had to shut all of their stores down because e-commerce companies like Amazon are severely undercutting them for the same products. And a lot of people won't know this, but Toys R Us actually outsourced their entire e-commerce operations to Amazon since day one. So what they've done by doing this is training people to buy toys on Amazon rather than Toys R Us. So that's a huge problem, okay? If you do this over the next five to six to 10 years even, you're actually training your customers to buy your products from a marketplace, not from your company or your brand. And anyone can start selling on marketplaces. So competition will get stiffer and you would end up losing a lot of revenue and market share in the long run. And this is why I will never ever suggest that you rely solely on marketplaces. But marketplaces has their strength, okay? For, for beginners to e-commerce, marketplaces cost almost nothing to start, just like drop shipping. And you wouldn't have to do any marketing because marketplaces usually have a lot of traffic already, right? And also, marketplaces tend to have a very easy to use dashboard which means that it's very very simple any beginner can start selling on marketplaces right away and because of their scale they would have people who would provide training to sell on marketplaces as well okay but about the weaknesses i've already covered one of them you lose complete control over um, your branding so it's not actually you that's selling that product in the customer's eyes it's actually amazon it's actually ebay that's selling that product right so that's an issue you wouldn't be able to do custom promotions for your products because you would have to follow um, the marketplace's policies and you would also lose control over shipping most of the time because marketplaces also have their shipping policies that are in place and you would also be forced to participate in their special events say Black Friday or Amazon Prime Day you would be forced to you know give out discounts just to you know get some eyeballs on your products on your listings yeah and at the end of the day depending on what products you're selling people like Amazon are known to actually eat up your business. For example, if you have a product that sells extremely well and Amazon has all that data, they're gonna buy over a company and produce something like that branded under Amazon to fight with their own vendors, which is why I really, really don't like doing business with marketplaces, okay? But there are a few ways where you can leverage on marketplaces to steal traffic from them instead of just relying on them. I don't have a problem using marketplaces to sell your products, but never ever rely too much on marketplaces because that will make your business extremely unsustainable. You would also have less control over your product margins. For example, if Amazon were to do a promotion, hey, okay, you can sell your product on our platform and we're gonna take 0% commission, for example. But once their market share grows big enough, what they're gonna do is, they're gonna increase the commissions and that's gonna eat into your margins and you don't want that, right? So think about this, steal traffic from marketplaces, you can sell there, but at the end of the day, steal the traffic back to your store. And step number two would be to never ever rely completely on marketplaces. Don't build your entire business around the marketplace model because it, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not going to be sustainable, okay? And the last business model is actually self-warehousing. It's similar to dropshipping. You have your own storefront, 
you do your all your marketing yourself but the difference here between drop shipping and self warehousing is actually having the inventory yourself you would have your own warehouse you would have your own operational team and if you're trying to build a long-term company this would be the long-term plan okay self warehousing because by doing self warehousing you have complete control from A to Z over your e-commerce business. You would be able to control the packaging box that you use. You would be able to put thank you cards in your uh, shipments so that you'll be able to increase retention, customer retention. You'd be able to, you know, control a lot more things. You would be able to uh, have higher margins as well because you would be, have access to bulk inventory purchase right so those are the strengths as for the weaknesses of course this usually has way higher startup capital because you would have to stock inventory um, you would also have to you know budget for warehousing you will also have to hire operational team members to help you out because you don't want to be stuck right doing the fulfillment and the warehousing and fulfilling and packaging especially when your business has grown so there are more costs involved in self warehousing but at the end of the day the margins will outweigh the time save from drop shipping so you can automate this with processes you will need your own inventory management system and stuff like that to make it very very efficient okay so self warehousing is typically more profitable but you would have a lot more capital uh, to start off with you would need a lot more capital and you would also have some capital stuck in inventory in case some inventory doesn't move because you will assume all of the inventory risk when it comes to self warehousing so that depends on how you negotiate with your suppliers as well payment terms and refunds are typically the best ways to hedge your risk when it comes to the self warehousing e-commerce model okay guys that's pretty much it for this video i've covered the three biggest types the three generic types of e-commerce uh, business models and i hope that this has helped you decide better if you're trying to start an e-commerce business okay that's all guys if you like what you see in this video remember to leave a comment or if you have any questions, leave a comment and remember to click the subscribe and the notification button so that you will get more updates on the content that we will publish. Okay, bye!